Pavilion has to offer. How's it going? Yeah, what can I get you guys? How about a wee pint of Guinness? Ooh. Can we uh, load you up down here? <laughs> That's right, down here at the Irish Pavilion. I feel like I am back in Ireland this morning. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up on the agenda. Of course, we've got uh, dancers coming a little bit later on. They're going to be performing for us. We're also the sh going to have the chef here who's going to be whipping up some Irish food. We're going to be talking about the menu a little bit later on. Also, of course, we got to get into the history. we got to get into the culture. We're going to be talking talking about immigration, which is this year's theme for the Irish Pavilion, and talking, of course, about the potato famine, the uh, struggles and hardships that the Irish people went through in uh, coming to Canada, and, of course, the celebration once they're here, and now, of course, 50 years, folklorama, and, of course, many of those years uh, brought along with the Irish Pavilion. So lots of great stuff going on this morning. We'll have more coming up uh, throughout the show. Tons of great history and fun times. Looking forward to it. Thanks for that, Alex. Our Alex Brown is down at the Irish Pavilion this morning. There's a lot of good old favorites yep. there, but a lot of new stuff too, Alex. Hey, good morning, guys. That's exactly right. We are celebrating Irish heritage down here at the Irish Pavilion for Folklorama. I'm joined by Heather and Joe right now. And Joe, let's start with you. For those who have never been out to the Irish Pavilion, I mean, this is what, your 47th year or something in the 50 years the Folklorama has been around? Yes, yeah, we've been here for a long time, many different locations over the years. Uh, the last number of years, we've been trying to do different themes uh, each year. So this year, our theme is immigration. Mm -hmm. And uh, just focusing on Irish immigration from three eras, and uh, especially to Canada, and of course Manitoba and Winnipeg. So, and a personal connection for you as well with that theme. Oh, absolutely, yes. My family immigrated in 1966 from Dublin, and we, we actually moved back in 1970 to Ireland and came back in '73 to Canada again. Wow. Yeah. We're going to so. be getting a look at the cultural display and the immigration display a little bit later on. Um, lots going on down here at the pavilion. It's a very busy one. What does a, a typical evening look like here? Well, it should start with a visit to the bar. <laughs> I mean, personally speaking, yeah, sure. <laughs> one of the benefits of the Irish Pavilion. Um, we have an amazing show planned. One of the things that we really pride ourselves with with our pavilion is including um, the local dance group, the mm -hmm. McDonald School of Irish Dance. And this year we actually have two dancers coming in from Dublin, Ireland. They're wow. world championship, ch ugh, championship <laughs> dancers, six in the morning. Yes. Championship <laughs> dancers, um, they travel internationally nationally and they're here in Winnipeg which is so exciting. Wow. We also have a band called Irish Stew and five out of six of the members um, have relatives who were part of the band that we originally had 47 years ago in oh Folklorama. Oh my gosh, yeah. what uh, all of these connections <laughs> you come in here and everything is interweaved and it's just uh, fantastic of course you're walking around you're enjoying the party you're enjoying the performances and you're also just really absorbing that culture. Absolutely we try and do uh, we focus heavily on culture in our uh, pavilion mm -hmm. and and we have cultural ambassadors so that when people come up to the displays, they can ask the questions that they want or uh, learn all those facts. And uh, we try to add something different every year. And this year, because of our theme of immigration, we have a port of entry uh, display. Um, so what it would be like for somebody coming, you know, uh, many years ago. <laughs> it's honestly, the displays here are insane. They're so good. We're going to show them to you a little bit later on. Plus, coming up, we've got some Irish dance and Ooh. some cuisine. There you up, go. Which I'm most excited for. <laughs> All the things. All right, <laughs> thanks for true. that, Alex. <laughs> thanks for that, Patty. All right, week two of Folklorama is now underway. Let's check in now with our Alex Brown. You're down at the Irish Pavilion. How's it going? Hey, good morning, Nicole and Raheem. Can you believe the first week of Folklorama has already flown by? I can't believe how quickly time has passed. Down here at the Irish Pavilion, we're at the port of entry right now. Um, this is really great. The attention to detail in these cultural displays is amazing. The theme for this year is immigration, emigrating to Canada from Ireland. All these different family stories that came to Canada and more specifically Manitoba. Take a look inside. We've got the old timey typewriter. We've got the quill and ink. I absolutely love it. All morning long, we're seeing what the pavilion has to offer, including some traditional dance coming up a little bit later on. So we are just getting started down here at the Irish Pavilion for Folklorama 50. All right, sounds good. Looking forward to hearing and seeing more. Thank you. Beautiful. Good stuff. Well, still have on CTV Morning Live. We are hanging out at the Irish Pavilion this morning. Here's a little taste of some of the entertainment they have on offer. We'll show you more. No.
All right, let's throw it on over to our <laughs> Alex Brown. You're at the Irish Pavilion this yep. morning. I see there's some dancers behind you, Alex. Hey, good morning. What's a little folklorama without amazing dancers? That's right. We're down here uh, at the Irish Pavilion. We're going to get a look at some amazing Irish dance right now. I'm joined by Maura. Let's talk about the School of Dance. Where are you guys from? Um, we dance out of the Ted Motika Dance Studio downtown. Mm -hmm. We've got a great relationship with them, and it's a lot of, it's very good place to do they have a huge dance floor so we yeah. enjoy that and tell us a little bit about the school what all do you guys do well we focus on traditional Irish dance and competition dancing mm -hmm. so the kids will go to feshes which is what an Irish dance competition is called these girls just came back from the North American Championships and did very well so we're really pleased about that mm -hmm. and we've got ages 5 to into their 20s Okay, so when we see the little, little ones, so cute, um, they really get going. They really pick up that speed really, really quickly. What's one of the beginner steps that you would learn? Can we have someone show us just something really easy? Um, Emma, can you give us a couple of skip two threes? Look at that. And then when they become more advanced, what is it gonna look like? Well, then it gets a lot faster and you're gonna see that in a moment and Wonderful. we're gonna make some noise. So if people um, are looking to come on out, do you guys know when you're performing? Yes, we perform every evening at 6.45, 8.15 and 9.45 with an extra show on, on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. And we love to have everybody come out and see it. Definitely, and if people are, are looking to get involved with Irish dance, can they come to you guys as well? They can come to us and our website is on the placemats on the tables. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. Okay, well, we've got some amazing dancers here uh, that are gonna take it away Way, have a little bit of a performance, take a look. All right, our Alex Brown is at the Irish Pavilion this morning. Alex, they're known for their dancing, they're known for some great beverages, but they also have some really good food. Exactly. The food is so important at any Folklorama Pavilion. And right now, we're in the kitchen at the Irish Pavilion. I'm joined by Ken right now. We're going to cook up a delicious dish. What are we making, Ken? We're making cold cannon this morning, Alex. Okay, so what is cold cannon? Cold cannon basically is potato, which is a, a staple of, of Ireland. Yes. And you put a little bit of bacon, onions, uh, some milk, some butter, a little mm -hmm. bit of salt and pepper, and we uh, mix it up. But yesterday, we went through about 90 gallons of cold cannon alone. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of potatoes. That is. Uh, we went through about 180 pounds of potatoes yesterday alone. So Wow, yeah. day one. Okay, let's get started here. What's the first step? So first step is just get some potatoes. Those have been boiled? Those have been boiled for about a half hour or 20 minutes. Just going to mash them. Now, here I'm doing a small bowl. I just showed you, Alex, a few minutes mm -hmm. ago. I do it in that big old Hobart over there because so, yeah. I, I make so much. And then we put just a little bit of just butter, a, just, just a little a bit tad. of butter, just a tad. <laughs> you got to make it nice and creamy. Yes, of course. And then we put in a little bit of milk, just a little the splash. The creamiest of potatoes. Yep. The creamier, the better. And, and potatoes have such a significance in Irish uh, culture. It, it has been. Uh, they've. Irish people have been eating potatoes for centuries. Mm -hmm. They grow up on it. It's the main staple of Ireland, and it's so important to their culture. Definitely. Okay, then, those are looking creamy. Yep. The next ingredient is we're going to throw in some bacon Ooh, and uh, onions. Now, I know health-wise, I should be skimming this off, but we, we do put the fat in just because... Uh, on the cold winter nights, you need a little bit of fat in your diet. Hey, and don't tell me twice yeah. that. That smells yeah. great. Well, I always tell people, don't ever trust a, a chef that's skinny. So that's why I... <laughs> that's what they say. That's right. 
The last ingredient I'm just going to put in is just a little bit of cabbage. And the cabbage just gives it a little bit of crunch, a little bit more flavor. Don't put a lot in, just a bit to add to the flavor. Okay. And now we're going to just mix, mix that up a little up. bit. And Goodness. now just a dash of salt and pepper just for a little bit of flavor. Seasoning, yep. We don't want to ruin that good uh, bacon taste, right? So you cool. just put a little bit. There we go. There is. That's coming along nicely. It's going to bind together. And we got 10 seconds left. Okay, here, quickly so we'll dish some out. And I've also got a little bit of Irish stew. So if you'd like to try that there out. There we go. There you go. How, does, how does that look? Up. It there looks great. And I'm diving in and sending it back to you guys. Enjoy. Yes. Hey, good morning. So we've seen some dance. We've eaten some amazing food. Totally wolfed it down after that last segment. And now we're in one of the cultural displays down here at the Irish Pavilion. I'm joined by Hugh. And the theme for this year's uh, pavilion is immigration, which is what we're going to talk about. Good morning. Good morning. Falcha. I love it. Okay, let's talk about there were kind of some different periods of immigration when it comes to Irish people. Exactly. Well, believe it or not, whenever the first ones came out, it was in the 13, 1400s. Oh. Actually, it was fishermen from the west of Ireland, from the west of Ireland right down through County Cork, and they came out to Newfoundland. Wow. Yeah. And then the next wave? The next wave was probably between 1600 and 1700, where people came out on sailing boats, so they did, mm -hmm. you know. And basically, the ships were so bad that uh, they actually called them coffin ships. Wow. That was because a lot of people actually died mm -hmm. coming over to Canada on the boats. It was a very know. perilous journey, oh, for absolutely. sure. And then the potato you know, famine. Oh, the potato too. famine in the 1840s, 1850s, you know, that's whenever most people came out, so it was. Mm -hmm. Like, there was about 600,000 people came out during that time. Yeah. And then the modern wave of folks, the including wave, yourself. Just like myself, yeah. yeah. Whenever we came out in the 60s and the 70s, yeah. Lots of my friends, they ended up in Toronto, so they did. Yeah. And uh, the northeast coast, Nova Scotia, so they did. And they brought with them, they, this is an idea that they brought along with them. Here we can see uh, the chess, possibly, that they brought along with them, so they did. Yeah. And believe it or not, they brought along hurling sticks. Here is a hurling stick. Here, here is a hurling ball, and believe it or not, our national sport in Canada actually originated from hurling. I you can love see, that. you can see here how closely a hockey stick resembles Very a hurling closely. stick. Yeah. Okay. Well, your family's actually represented on this table. Here, my great grandfather and his brothers came out, so they did. Here's my uncle Terence. Here's my uncle Lawrence, and they came out in about. 1912, 1913, so they did, and they sailed on the, uh, the Baltic ship, wow. which actually came into, uh, into Toronto, so it did. So they are, they are living in and uh, in around the Toronto area and their ancestors and have cousins all over and the East Coast, well, believe it or not. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing with us. They have such amazing connections down here at the Irish Pavilion. They're actually logging if you're Irish born or your family has Irish roots over there at the port of entry. And you can just see the Manitobans pouring in with all these Irish connections. So cool. It is neat to learn all about. Okay, thanks for that, Alex. Hey, good morning. So we were just talking but I'm joined by Joe and Bonnie right now and I am leaving this morning with a full belly and a great attitude because we've had so much fun this morning down here at the Irish Pavilion for Folklore Emma 50. Um, let's talk about for those who have never been before, what's all here, Joe? Well, obviously we have our great Irish cuisine, mm -hmm. so Irish stew, Guinness ribs, Colcannon, those types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our cultural displays and of course we have an amazing new show this year. Yes. Yeah. And we, we saw some dancers earlier this morning. If people want to come on on out what do they need to know should people be buying tickets in advance yes you can buy tickets in advance up to an hour before or you come to the door you can just pay in cash or debit and uh, yeah shows are 615 6 45 8 15 and 9 45 wonderful great dancers yes exactly right you're gonna just be marveling at how fast they can move those feet Amazing. it's great um so earlier we saw some savory dishes but you guys also have some sweet desserts as well yes yeah, sticky toffee pudding is I just ordered more of it because it's yeah. just so uh, goes like crazy. It's delicious, and we have a new dessert this year called Mud Fight, and it's death by chocolate. Oh my god! It is so good. So, say no more. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Also important, uh, along with the party element, there's also the cultural, the history element. Um, immigration is the topic this year. That's correct. Yeah, we decided this year we we have a new theme every year, so it's immigration, as you said, and we're doing three eras from the 1850s, 1950s, and then modern day. 
So, yeah. and uh, the show is built around that as well. So there's a story in the show. Yeah. And then, of course, it, we also have elements of that in our cultural displays as well. Yeah, and you're asking people if they are Irish born or have uh, Irish ancestry to let you guys know. Absolutely, yes. Actually, um, the Irish government has asked us to track. They're interested in the number of people that come through here. And oh. yeah, and so that's why we're trying to get as much information on people as possible. Okay, yeah. well, of course, you can come on down. You can uh, check out the wares make sure to try the soda bread right <laughs> yes make sure to try the soda bread <laughs> yeah. it's delicious yeah it is so delicious okay well the irish pavilion down here at where are you guys located 2050 chevrolet just off waverly perfect come on down have a good time and that's going to do it for us this morning all right lots happening down there thanks Alex. Dance is a big part of the Irish Pavilion. Organizers say the show is brand new this year and features two world champion Irish dancers. And they're joining the show along with the McDonald School of Irish Dance and the band Celtic Way. There's also an abundance of Irish fare, including stew, Guinness ribs, and of course the beverages. The Irish are known for their hospitality, so of course, you know, you get the good Irish welcome when you get here, and just the whole atmosphere is fun and light, and the show is really energetic and just a lot of fun. I'm not sure if it's Guinness ribs, it's Guinness and ribs, just to be clear. Anyway, this year's theme is immigration, and people of Irish descent are invited to sign a board showing where they're from. The pavilion has three shows nightly with an extra early show added on Saturday.